I also think that as we talk about this broader issue of, of development, you know, leadership development, as we were talking about before, it's important to understand how people learn. You know, there is a lot of work being done right now in the area of neuroscience and its relationship to learning. There was a study done of taxi drivers in the United Kingdom. And one of the things that you've been to, you've been to London, you, you know what it's like. It, those, the, those streets are so convoluted, they yeah. are so difficult to navigate that if you are indeed a taxi driver there, you've got to have a powerful command of, of you know, location and of understanding proximity and all those things because there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, of clear patterns there. And what they've done is that for those individuals that were getting ready to become taxi drivers, to, to, to apply for the job, their brains were scanned. And then after they'd gone through the training, which was very in-depth, to become taxi drivers, their brains were scanned again. And there was a remarkable difference in certain parts of the brain where after they had gone through that process, they'd gone through that learning, they, they had shifted uh, dramatically. Same thing's been done with athletes and musicians. Activity that we're involved in can literally alter our brains. And, and so I think that as we, as we look at this bigger issue of learning and, and development, it's important to understand that. And there's a lot of work being done right now in this idea of deliberate practice or purposeful practice. And how do we build expertise? Is it just about repetition? Is it just about having a, a, a huge number of hours accumulated playing the piano, practicing the piano? No, it's about a lot more things. It's about being able to focus it's about having the right type of feedback. It's about increasing the rigor in a very strategic way that really only a coach, someone that understands the discipline and understands performance in, in terms of how we, how we perform better can help with. And then it's fixing. So it's focus, feedback, and fixing uh, with the idea that the rigor is increasing incrementally along the way so that as we work longer, we're also working harder. And, and, and we're becoming much more proficient. I, I'd like to go back and sort of pick just one of those words, one of those concepts, and, uh, and that is the concept of focus. And I know that th those individuals with whom we work on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, is a wide age span, you know, from, you know, you know from active, learners that are 18 to 20, 22, all the way up uh, to those of us <laughs> that are in our senior years, sir. And, and, and that is, how do you begin to create a system? How do you begin to create a pathway in, in a way that says, hey, look, you know, let's sort of pull back one or two steps, slow down a little bit about this headlong plunge into multitasking, pull back to single focus, you know, one task at a time, but do it well. How do we go about changing systems, both from um, all the major institutions that we find ourselves working with or that make up society to create that focus? How do we do that? I, I think that it begins with the individual themselves. And I think this is this is one of my biggest criticisms of education, whether we're talking about public education, whether we're talking about private education, whether we're talking about adult learning, okay. whether we're talking about uh, leadership development at a corporate level. They all suffer from the same thing, and that is we do such a great job providing technical content. This is what you need to know. These are the, the five steps to do X. But when do we ever help that learner understand how to learn, how learning happens, how we build expertise, which can drive performance, how important the, the, the role of focus is in being able to expand our knowledge and our skill sets. And we don't do that. How is it we can invest so many years in education, primary, secondary, post-secondary, adult learning, but not spend time even a day learning how we learn so that that learner can make sure that they're doing what they need to do on their end because it is very much an individual thing to make sure that they are positioning themselves to be able to get the absolute most out of that experience. 
We don't do that. And I, I am so baffled as a, as, a, as, a, as a former educator in higher education and now as a, a person work that works in, in adult learning. We need to make sure that our learners know, know how learning happens. Well, you know, um, ever thus it has been so, Dr. Marchese. And, and, but I think that it has always been a challenge for those of us that have been part of the educational system. And, uh, and I've been in the business for a few years. And, and I've seen the evolutionary changes. I've seen the tide turn going in and coming out uh, a number of times. And I don't believe that we've learned well enough on how to balance the societal changes that take place that are driven, i.e. technology, and how it impacted our, our social construct of education. And then, and I think that is also true in, in the adult world of business organizations. And, um, and I think that we've created this, an old term, uh, smog, uh, uh, that sort of lingers in, with our learning uh, in a number of ways. And, um, and I think that is probably time for us to pull back and re-examine how we structure learning, both for the traditional, what we would see K through higher ed, but also in the workplace, uh, in our community organizations, whether they are for profit or are NGOs. And, um, and going about how to, how, how to do that. If you, if you were t t to serve as my consultant here for a moment. Okay. You know, I've got an organization that uh, is um, stagnant, but has a very, very excellent um, history of doing well. But yeah, they're sort of sluggish right now. My organization's sluggish. And if you were to come in and say, what would be one or two of the very first things that you would suggest that I do within the organization to enhance learning? Well, if I were an external consultant coming into your organization, I would be operating under the assumption that people do not know me. And so I think one of the most important things, and this is a universal best practice for consulting of any sort, is that the first thing you need to do is you need to listen. So you need to ask good questions. Okay. And not only good questions posed to you if you are the, the leader, even though that's right. important. I need to ask questions of individuals at all levels of the organization okay. to understand the current state, to understand the, the organizational climate, to understand the challenges that the people are facing and their sense of what is precipitating those things. I also think that it's important to understand and to clarify not only the current state, but what the desired state looks like. So if we had no boundaries, if we had nothing that's standing as an obstacle that's getting in our way, what would our organization look like on a great day? How are we feeling? What are we doing? What are our stakeholders or our customers, our clients? What do they think about us? What are they saying about us on this great day? And so I think the more that we understand what is, the more that we can understand where we want to be or what should be, I think the more that we can position the intervention or the activities in such a way that we can begin to take the next steps. As you take those next steps, I think that again, it goes back to some of the things we've been talking about today about learning, how, how people can take ownership for that. Um, I think that the idea that a, there's a one size fits all approach to learning or to change is, is foolishness. And so understanding how people at all levels can own that change that can be a part of that process, can make a difference and know that their efforts, however small they may be, are moving that organization towards the state that is desired. Okay.